Okay, let's do this. Beware the deep dark forest by Sue Whiting and Annie White. <laughs> You must be, you must be where the deep dark forest, Rosie told Tinky. Never, ever go in there. But Tinky was just a tiny pup. He didn't understand, so Tinky went. Come back, Tinky, cried Rosie. Tinky didn't come back. I have to go and find him, Rosie said. But the deep dark forest is thick with danger, warned Rosie's grandma. Carnivorous plants, they say. And venomous snakes, said Rosie's dad. So I've heard. I can't leave Tinky in that deep dark forest, said Rosie. She can. The forest was deep and dark and muddy. Tinky! Rosie called. There was no answer, only strange noises that made Rosie's knees wobble. But she couldn't see any carnivorous plants, and she couldn't see any venomous snakes, and she couldn't see Tinky either. <gasps> Look at that! The entrance place is creepy, thought Rosie, and she opened her eyes till they were round as the moon. The forest became deeper, it became darker, it became muddier. Then over her eyes, Rosie came upon a terrifying sight. It wasn't a carnivorous plant, it wasn't a venomous snake, it was worse. It was a wolf! A big, bristly brood of a wolf with fangs like daggers. He looks scary, thought Rosie. Rosie held her breath and crept past, trying her best not to squelch. <gasps> oh, on and on and on she trudged. Then, just as she squeezed through some thorny vines, Rosie came upon an even more terrifying sight. It wasn't a carnivorous plant. It wasn't a venomous snake. It wasn't a bristly wolf. It was worse. Much worse. It was a ravine! A dizzily, dangerously, dreadfully deep ravine. The way ahead seemed impossible, but Rosie knew that somewhere on the other side was a frightened little dog, lost and alone. <gasps> there is no bottom. Rosie tore off some twisty vines, she plaited and knotted. She closed her eyes and swung across. Oh my, Rosie! That was tricky. Rosie as she rounded a bend. And then on the far side of the creek, there he was, Tinky. Rosie was just about to call out. But between Rosie and Tinky stood the most terrifying sight of all. It wasn't a carnivorous plant, it wasn't a venomous snake, it wasn't a bristly wolf or a deep ravine. Was worse, much, much worse. It was a troll, a menacing, monstrous, muddy tor, as tall as the forest trees and as wide as the river boulders. It had googly eyes and an enormous hairy belly. Here comes dinner, it I'm not dinner, yelled Rosie. I'm Rosie. Rosie's fury startled the troll. It 
all scattered on the slippery click pebbles. Then it toppled back. Kerplunk! Splash! Plunk! Into the muddy water. Oh. Here's my chance, thought Rosie. Rosie snatched Tinky and raced away. She swung across the dizzily deep ravine. She slipped past the bristly brood of a wolf. She squelched back through the deep and dark and muddy forest. At little at last, she tumbled into her village. You saved Tinky from the carnivorous plants, cried Rosie's grandma. That was brave, lass, said Rosie's dad. With all those venomous snakes and all. It was nothing, really, said Rosie. Besides, I had to save Tinky. He's just a pop. And it was true. Tinky was just a pop. But even the tiniest pop knows a hero when he sees one. Aww. <laughs> what a lovely story, guys, for everyone. For Trina and Nicole, Nisa's extraordinaire. And in loving memory of a beloved Tinky SW. Oh, for Grandma Hero, a Dublin for everyone, guys. What a lovely story. What a brave bravery shown by Rosie. Oh, she went through everything to save her beloved Tinky. What a lovely, lovely story, guys. You would do anything for your loved ones. You would show courage. You would show compassion, you would show kindness, and you would win everything! Just like Rosie. And as you know, as, as it says, but even the teeniest pup knows a hero when he sees one. That's right. Aww. Well done, Rosie. What a lovely, lovely, lovely thing you did.